James Maraca talking about Snaplocks. Please make him welcome. All right. First, I apologise for using Windows in our Linux conference. Um, my name's James. Um, I'm from Squarebit. I've been a startup company for about six months now. I'm an official distributor for the Arduino in Australia, so hopefully I don't do any injustice today. Um, I'm presenting today Snapblocks. Um, it's a project that I worked on last year as my final year project at uni. Um, it's it's, it's a way to get kids involved in electronics and robotics and science classes and that sort of thing. So I'll give you an overview. Um, as I said, this project was sponsored by myself. We had a, a couple group of us um, working together to... What we wanted to do is make a drag and drop GUI for the Arduino interface. So there are some out there at the moment, but we wanted a, an overall package, so we wanted a drag and drop interface. Is everyone familiar with the Lego Next or Lego Mindstorms? Yep. So basically what we want to do is try and emulate that and take... I find that the Arduino is very good and it's very easy for you and I to use and it's very easy to program, get our projects up and running. But for young kids up to six, seven, eight years old, it's very difficult to conceptualise what programming is. So that's what we try to do. We try to make large colourful blocks that will emulate actual code and what we're trying to do is teach kids code. Um, we've created a custom controller around the Arduino which I'll go through as well and also a suite of sensors and actuators which all link together and give us a hopefully a nice robotics package that our kids can use. So I'll gloss over the interface that we created really quickly and I'll give you a demo in a moment. Uh, this is the software interface we've created. As you can see, it's got large chunky blocks. Um, that example there is a flashing LED. So as you can see, there's an LED on port A. It goes on for one second, I think it says. It turns off and then it goes um, one second it's off for. So as you can see, a kid can just plug in the controller, drag four blocks onto the screen, change a couple of settings and they've got a flashing light on their board. These are the, the blocks that we end up coming up with to get us a nice robotics package. We've got a motor, you can specify the port, the direction is specified as a percentage from 100% which is forward to negative 100%. So we're also not only trying to take the programming concepts of uh, digital write or analog write for a pulse width modulation but also 255. What's 255? How is that representative of I want to drive full speed forward? So that's what we're trying to do as well. Um, we've got a buzzer on board which gives us a preset of defined tones or uh, errors and that sort of thing. A data logger so that we can have, we've got a, a real-time clock and an SD card on board so we can use it within science experiments as well. Um, a generic light on LED and an onboard LCD as well so you can put text or diagnostics on the screen. We also then have, they're all, as you've noticed, they're all colour coded. So they're our output blocks and they're an orange colour. So you start to see, um, when I show you the hardware, that um, the colour coding follows through to the blocks and the controller. So everything's very conceptually easy to see what plugs into where. Um, we've also got a set of inputs, so a light sensor, a thermometer, a switch and a microphone, so sound sensitivity. So light, for example, is uh, defined as zero for complete darkness or 100% for complete brightness, temperature in Celsius, uh, switch on or off, which is released or pressed, and also a microphone, which um, it's a bit difficult to understand how we're going to organise it and we didn't end up implementing this block in the end, but basically a bump switch or a, a clap sensor of some sort. Um, then you get the, your control box that we've defined. So a start, every project has a start block. This is where everything begins from and this is where your loop is set up and ideally you double click on it, double click on it and specify that motor is on port A, uh, lights on port B and so on. And also an emergency stop in case you want to halt your program, something goes wrong. Uh, when we get into the more complex functionality, so we've implemented a, a repeat uh, or a while or a for loop. Um, you can drag blocks within this loop, specify how many times you'd like to repeat, and it'll actually loop through that code continuously a number of times, and then go out and execute the following code. And also a delay of a period of time in milliseconds or seconds, but I'll go through that in more detail in my demo. So this is the hardware that we've created. Um, it's not finished in the housing, but as far as the electronics go, it's pretty good. Um, we've got some more revisions I like in other versions, but as you can see, the inputs are, are blue, the outputs are red or orange to match the, uh, the blocks that are on screen. Um, LCD, there's, everything's built into it. This is based on an um, at Mega, so it gives us, we went with that route because we get more PWM, so um, I'll go through the hardware in a second, but also we've also redesigned Lego. Um, 
We're putting the sensors that you can see on the bottom there have a generic uh, RJ11, RJ12 connector, like a telephone connector, which is very easy for kids to plug in. Instead of the normal pins that can break or bend or if you've got um, poor dexterity, um, you get a large telephone connector to just snap into port A, snap in the light sensor within the blocks in the housing. And just to give a shameless plug, Panoco um, generously helped us out with the um, 3D printing and I'd like to get a relationship up with them um, or Thingverse or all these sort of things. So ideally that all these blocks and the designs will be open source and that sort of thing so that if you have a 3D printer you can print your own blocks, you can design your own circuits and, and make your own controller, um, your own blocks and ultimately your own system at home. There you go. Uh, for the hardware, so as I said, we've got four analog inputs on the board and they're I squared C expandable. So not only do you have a temperature sensor, but you can also expand it to more complex things or expand it to 128 different devices later on if you want. Uh, four outputs, all of them have uh, two amp drivers on them. So uh, you can drive motors or just flash an LED, whatever you like. And they also have a pin that's expandable for TACO feedback, which we didn't implement. But um, yeah, you can read data from your motor and get the speed. A real-time clock and an SD card so you can use data logging in experiments, so science experiments you can plot on the screen um, temperature of water rising or a, a chemical reaction of sorts, a piezo buzzer to make sound, an LCD to get diagnostic feedback and also four user buttons so that you can start, stop, a menu interface on your LCD, whatever you like, four buttons there for you to do what you will. Uh, these are the blocks that we've designed. So as you can see, once again, they're color coded to match the ports and also then back to the software as well. So we've got a light sensor, a touch sensor, it's a basic switch, a microphone sensor and a, and a temperature sensor as well. Um, all of these are in Lego bricks with generic electronics in them so that you can just slide them in and do what you want with them. There's an LED and a motor as well. Um, there's a motor, we also designed a, a mating shaft to the motor, so we'll gen gen generically mate with uh, Lego motors, Lego wheels, that sort of thing. Um, what we tried to achieve was everybody at home has Lego, so why reinvest in a Lego Mindstorms kit or a Lego Next kit for three, four hundred dollars when you can just use your Lego that you have at home, buy a motor or two motors, buy two or three sensors, and for fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, you've got your own robotics platform. Um, demonstration, it worked this morning and I'm hoping it's going to work now. So this is a software, once again it's written in Java so ideally it would be expandable to Windows, Linux and to Mac. So when you start up this is what you get, you can zoom in, zoom out, it's a very generic interface. Um, what we're going to build today is a line following robot and I'll give you a quick overview of the other more complicated uh, sensors. So you can have a repeat for example. Just drag it, snaps to there. Double click on the block and you can change the properties of it. Three loops. Uh, have an output, a light in there. The light will go on three times, turn it off and you can set up a blink routine like that. Just click on it, press delete and it's gone. Um, so it's a very, very basic, that's a for loop and a, a digital write and so on and that's what you get. How this is set up is that your downwards path, so you can have multiple streams going across. As you go across you start to create a state machine. So we have your inputs over here, you, you drag your inputs onto the top layer. So you have your if statements, these are your if statements. So your default, your default set of codes goes from the start downwards. So we'll go through the process of creating a line following robot. Uh, we start with a motor from the start and then all the outputs go in a downwards direction. So we grab the motor, we drag it across and snap it down. We say motor A, we want it to go forward initially, so we just want to get the robot driving forward. We click on it and we go to, oh, I did it to 30% because I've got new batteries and it's quite fast. So 30%, you see the graphics on screen, okay, so motor on port A going forward. Same for port B as well, 30% and okay. And then also we want to um, just wait a little bit to make sure it's going to do that. So we'll put a delay in there of uh, 20 milliseconds. So if we download that now and compile it, it'll, it'll create, uh, we've created a custom set of libraries behind this. Uh, we're using macros and a basic style language. That was more or less to meet the uni's criteria of make a complicated project of sorts. Um, ideally this would gener uh, generate raw Arduino code. So your motor needs a bit more of a complexity on the motor, but to analog write to your PWM and put that out to the port, analog write port B. And there you go. And also the delay is just a standard delay of 20 milliseconds. So now we go across and we want to start to read the light sensors. 
So we click the light sensor and we create an, another state. If it do, does our forward motion first and then goes across and does the if statement. So we click on the light sensor and now we've got a light sensor plugged into port A. We can set our minimum max range, so we're going between 0 and 20. So that's the dark line at the moment. And this inside or outside, so as you can see when I click on it, there's a red line between 0 and 20. Uh, I'll do it a bit more obviously, so if we say 20 and 40, you can see I'm now, if it's between 20 and 40 percent, that's the inside. If I click the outside, I'm saying if it's between 0 and 20, or if it's between 40 and 100 percent, then do something. Alright? So we'll go back to the inside. Okay. And now when we go over a black line, we want one motor to, to go in reverse so that we start to get create a motion of the, of the robot following the black line. So once again, grab a motor, drag it across and snaps down. A, and then we set this backwards to create a uh, reverse and a pivot on the spot, minus 25. Once again, a light sensor, now we want to detect a white line. Uh, this will be to 25, so we'll allow a bit of tolerance between 20 and 25 percent to 100. And also we're going to put a motor on there. This is for the opposite motor now, so we want to pivot the other way. And to make sure it's doing it, we also want to put a delay in. What we can do, we can just click on delay, copy, paste, and it puts it there. Copy, paste, puts it there. And that's a basic line following robot. So the process flow will be, we'll start the program, and it'll in the setup function in your normal Arduino code, it'll set your ports and all that sort of stuff, so the kids don't actually have to worry about that. That's completely disconnected from the kids. We're just teaching them how to get a motor moving in one direction, how to read a light sensor, make it do something else. So we start off, we drive forward for a little bit, we get to the end here, then we go over to here, we read the... Cable okay, out. All right, cable in. Uh, read the light sensor over the black line, then it goes down, turns the motor, pivots in one direction, pivots finally over to the white line, and we end up going into the other direction. Fingers crossed, I'll plug it in. And I'll press compile and download. So download to robot up at the top there. Now what this is doing is compiling all the custom libraries that we've created. It's generating this code, taking that code, generating the Arduino code and compiling it and then downloading it. And once we get to 90% it should be downloading. Um, yeah, as, as I said at the moment it's creating a basic style language. Ideally I'd like to make it transparently Arduino because it takes a long time to do this sort of stuff. Um, where to next for this? I'll do the demo, but where to next? I would like to open source this and give this away because we work so hard on it and there's, I think, a lot of potential in a generic kit such as this at a cheap entry point for kids, for sciences, for schools, for anything. Um, the Arduino is a great system, but it does have the inherent complexities of what is programming. If you've never programmed before, how do you teach somebody what digital right means? It's, it's very difficult. All right, and I've got my mat down here. So we'll put it on the mat and press run. And that's your line following robot. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, so ideally, this is what we're going to get to expanding. So what we wanted to do is have like another layer of abstraction so that how do you say um, read a sensor value and turn the motor to that speed? So we've got these variables in the ar ar arithmetic for the adding and multiplying of stuff like that, but we don't have it at the moment. Um, one of the advantages with this system that we've found is that you, it's more logical in the way that you actually go through having your sensors on top to other graphic programs that are out there that do this Arduino thing. Um, instead of in one slab going downwards, we can actually have multiple streams of code in there. But yeah, that's our next step, yes. Anyone else? Yes? Got more plans for inputs and outputs? Different types? Well, I've got... 
yes, it's pretty much expandable as you, as you go. What I like to do for the hardware is that we found that now that Arduino is releasing new boards, we're already depleted and, and we mean nothing. So what I like to do is make this into a glorified shield of your inputs and outputs along the top of the board, plug in your Arduino and you get this package. All the USB and everything's not worried about by us to create this board. Um, the advantage of that is once you grow out of this system and if you want to get a shield or if you want to get something else and actually program, you can do that as well and you're not restricted to it. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. And if anyone else wants to help, please uh, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to, yeah, that'd be good. Anyone else, that's it? All right, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Okay, so we have a 10-minute break now. and. Um